So sweet of you all. You're fun. Hi, Rosa. <laughs> um, you can sit if you want. You're fine. Okay, I'm not going to push it. You're, you're adults. Well, not all of you, but some of you are. Um, thanks for coming to VIP. We're so excited to be at the beautiful Ryman again here in Nashville. What's up with the rain, yo? Very rainy. Okay, we're going to answer some questions. There's a lot. We got so many questions. Yeah. It's like pages. So we'll do our best to get through as many of them as we can. And then our, in the past, if we don't get through everything, sometimes we'll answer them on our sub stack, which is called I Think We're Alone Now. I'm sure some of you have heard of it. If you haven't, you should subscribe. It's really cool. <laughs> okay, Sarah, what life events can we expect to be explored in junior high book number two? Okay, so for those of you who don't know, we have a new graphic novel out called Junior High. And it's, yeah, thank you. It's been really, it's been so fun. And it's, the, the book one is, is, is fictionalized, but it is more like loosely based on our actual junior high experience. And book two, we got to be completely fictional. Like we got to just sort of take it into a, in a new, completely different direction. So that was super fun. And... It comes out next year, and essentially, the Tegan and Zara in the in the book, um, they launch their music career while in junior high, which seems utterly exhausting. But um, <laughs> but they're excited. <laughs> Anyways, it's really fun, and we're actually going to start working on a new book um, when we're finished this tour. We're writing um, another another book sort of aimed at like a middle grade, you know, kids kind of. Uh, demographic because we're immature. Okay, so <laughs> but it's not a graphic novel. It's, it's like not a graphic. It's a chapter novel. book. Like, yeah. We're so excited. It's been really, really fun. So thanks to those of you who supported the book because it's been great for us. Yeah. It's so fun. Uh, when was the last time I googled my name and why? <laughs> I do it constantly, um, not to find out what people are saying about me, but to figure out where I was or what I was doing at certain times. Or like recently, I wanted to get a haircut, so I googled like Tegan and Sarah love you to death. And like, I like look for images mostly, but my mom for a really long time had a Google alert on and I would get text messages from her and she'd be like, oh, did you know that today on Yahoo News, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, turn that off. Stop looking at that. But I don't know. I got to look stuff up. It's how I tell time. Um, Sarah, would we ever put out unreleased songs on an album? Specifically, they've mentioned when I get up, our moment has passed and sheets. Um, I don't know. I don't even understand how to put out music that's supposed to come out. I don't, I barely understand now even what is supposed to happen or how it works or where it goes or who wants it or who cares. And so the thought of just putting more stuff out is like, I, I have no idea. I'm confused. I'm confused. I, it used to just make so much more sense for me because it was just physical, you know? It was like, you want it, I have it, now you have it. That's it, you know? And the digital landscape, I almost said landfill, um, <laughs> it's confusing me. <laughs> um, that's, those are my thoughts on it. Um, someone asked um, how difficult it is to bring Sid, my child, on tour. The answer is it's very challenging. And um, mostly because when we go on tour, it feels it feels like every man for himself. Like there's a little bit of survival mode that happens. And emotionally, 20 years on tour, I mean, it's just like crazy habits. Like you just, you do the same things, you kind of have the same tactics to get through the through the weeks away from family and friends. And then when Stacy and my partner Stacy and Sid come on tour, I kind of have to act more like a normal person, like the way I do at home, but it's on tour. So I haven't quite figured that balance out yet, but he's delightful. He just learned, um, he's just started to get into music. So anytime he hears any kind of music or beat, he goes like this. <laughs> and then he goes like this, which I think we do in the kitchen when we're cooking dinner at night, we put music on, we're always like, what's up, Sid? So now he goes like. <laughs> God, so cute. Okay, um, Tegan, how do you get yourself in the right headspace for writing music? Well, this is like actually good as a continuation of what Sarah was saying around our complete and total bafflement about how to release music. I, I think we don't necessarily have a formula for how to get inspired to write. I think it just happens sometimes. A lot of artists love to write when they're on tour and they set up 
studios in the back lounge of the bus and we just have never been like that. I, um, today, as I was waiting to leave the hotel, a guy whipped out his guitar and just started jamming in the hotel lobby. <laughs> when that happens, like I had therapy after and I said to my therapist, in those moments, I don't feel like a musician. I feel like a fraud because I'm like, why would he do that? <laughs> um, Sarah and I, you know, up until recently, don't have our guitars visible in our house. I don't have posters of my shows or like, you know, there was a time where we used to sell records and got like gold records. They're all in bubble wrap and storage. Like, I don't know, I feel very disconnected from my identity as a musician when I'm not actually on tour. So 25 years on, I'm still figuring out like how to be a musician and when to be a musician. And you know, the inspiration is sort of like an itch, it just happens. And if I'm lucky enough to be in a place that I'm comfortable and I can scratch it, then I sit down and write a song. And if I don't, the moment passes and I just go back to doing whatever it is I fill my time with, which <laughs> time's passing quickly, so it seems fine. So, but, um, but when it does happen, I just love it. I feel so lucky to be able to make things. It feels like magic, so. Um, Sarah, in the early years, we spoke a lot about being inspired and loving Smashing Pumpkins and Bruce Springsteen. What inspires you in this era of your career? Oh boy. Um, like this is therapy. It's like with all questions about actual music. I'm like, what? Yeah, I love so much music. I do, I actually do put up, um, I, I, I have like a, cha a, a playlist on Spotify that I change frequently and you can find it through our Substack or just by searching it, but it's called Don't Be Old and it's kind of my reminder to myself to like always be looking for new music and to sort of stay in touch with what's happening. I have a tendency to sort of either stay, like I, I, li I listen to fairly, like music in the margins is how I sort of define it. Like I don't listen to like super popular music. I don't necessarily listen to what's on the radio. Um, I just sort of have my interests and they, um, and they keep me going, but I do try to stay somewhat current and care about what's happening. But I don't know if it's like the age or just the time, but there's just so much. I don't really understand how people even figure it out anymore. It used to be like you, like I still feel this way when I like an album, I just listen to it for years. Like I don't even need a lot of music to get me to, to get me excited, but there's lots of great new music. And I, I would just, if you're really curious, I would recommend looking at my playlist. And there's actually a question, I'll just say this too about, um, fans loving to know what we're enjoying reading and if we would ever join Goodreads as a way to keep us updated. I have no idea. I did not even know I could do that. So <laughs> just another thing for me to figure out. <laughs> but add it to the list. Um, I do love sharing my, I do love sharing what I like to read, um, what I like to watch and what I like to listen to, but I'm really, I'm really comfortable with the fact that it's fairly niche or as Americans say, niche. Yeah. And so, do they? A lot do, yeah. Not all Americans, I see, I see. I see. <laughs> Not all Americans come back to one country, I guess, it's fine. I'm gonna do some quick ones here. Um, did Tegan ever get her toque back? I did, thank you so much. Thank you for asking. Um, how's the teleprompter working out? It's awesome, although, I'm so sad. Like yesterday, I know the day before yesterday, we played a festival and I was scared at it the whole time. I don't even need it, but because people were far away, I didn't feel like anyone could tell I was looking at it. I have been, I have to admit, been self conscious this first week with the teleprompter because I feel like people in the front row will think I'm looking at it, so then I don't look at it, which is ridiculous because it's being set up every day for me. So why wouldn't I just look at it? And I bet no one in the front row has a clue that this is a teleprompter, so, but, um, in theory, it's going to be awesome. Although a few songs, we get we have an amazing, amazing, amazing lighting director who's doing a great job. I think he's in the room, so I don't want him to be self-conscious about this. But sometimes there's a lot of light that comes at it, and then you can't see the teleprompter. But thankfully, it's during songs we know the lyrics too, so it's um, it's working out right. Um, are there any aspects of or aspects of the old way of touring or making music that you miss? Today, I said regarding touring, I miss going on tour and then coming home and no one knew what I did. Like, I'd get home, my friends would be like, what happened? Was it amazing? And I'd be like, yeah, we went to Nashville and we played this venue and it looked like that. Like, it, now everyone just knows everything because it's on social media. Like, miss the feeling of like telling people things. I uh, 
I've always been really resistant. I've never had personal social media. I've never been on Facebook before. And part of the reason why I did that was so that I could have that option to like actually say to my friends, how are you? What have you been doing? You look well. Instead of being like, I saw your social media, so I guess we'll just have brunch and talk about the news. Like, you know, like it just doesn't feel, I miss that, I miss that. Um, someone asked if we would ever be on Hot Ones, and if you don't know that show, everyone knows that show. <laughs> and the answer is absolutely. It's so, did anyone see the, I haven't seen the full episode, but Melissa McCarthy's just promo in front of God, so funny, okay. Um, what was the inspiration behind the song 19? I've been listening to your music for so long, it feels like a blanket. <laughs> I had my daughter, who's here tonight, at 19, and your music has been such a big part of, big part of the soundtrack of our lives. Thanks for it all. That's so cool. Um, I said this at a, a VIP like earlier this week, I think um, it was at VIP, but there was a great podcast with a bunch of musicians who were all talking about how hard it is when you put a record out because you have to go out on tour and you have to talk about the meaning of the album and the songs, but that actually it takes time to like really understand the story, even for us as writers, to really understand what the song was about and what it means. The more I play a song, the more I perform it, the more I see it out in the world, the more it transforms. And so I don't really know what I was writing exactly about when I wrote 19, but over time, it really has become representative of a moment in my life. I was newly single. I was off the road for the first time in a long time. And I was chasing somebody who was unavailable. Um, and I, yeah, I had been in a really long relationship where I was very well behaved in that relationship. And all of a sudden I was single and I was like, I was getting tattoos and I was a DJ for a second. And then <laughs> I, my nickname at the time was Tequila T. So there was like some tequila being drunk. And I, um, the girl that I really liked, when I would text her after I'd had a few drinks, she would say, are you 15, are you 16? Like, you know, meaning like, how young are you acting right now? And, ever, and for me, I, she would only talk to me if I said I was like 19. That's the legal drinking age in Canada. <laughs> anyway, too much info, but that's where the I'm 19 call me comes from, the place to text for that. But yeah, it's a song about, yeah, wanting to be with somebody and them not necessarily feeling that connection to you, but don't worry, I got her in the end. So. <laughs> Um, there's so many good questions. What about this one? How about what's the most surprising thing about becoming a parent? Especially, like, can you reference what's like with your mom? Well, I was, I think that my biggest surprise has just been how much I love it and how natural it feels. I always worried that I never was that into kids. Like, <laughs> I was always sort of like, oh yeah, the kid, you know, I'll talk to it or I'll ask it some questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> There's also like a lot of boundaries with kids, you know, like even my friends' kids who, who I really love and I'm really connected to, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know how to say it except to say that all those boundaries around kids are not, they don't, they're not relevant in the current dynamic that I have. Like I get to hug Sid as much as he'll stand it, I get to kiss him and look at him, like sometimes I just look at him. Just stare at him. Like if you did that to someone else's kid, people would be like, why are you doing that? But like I just can't believe how much how just how easy it is, how uncomplicated it actually feels. And um, and he's just like such a lovely guy and it just makes me feel very connected to um, like it's just a different part of me. I'm just a big part of my life has been being part of Tegan and Zara and now I suddenly have this other thing that feels really significant, and I'm like, I'm the CEO of that company too, and I'm just like, <laughs> anyways, it's just, been, it's just been really wonderful. I can't speak to the two moms thing, except to say that I very judgmentally think we're doing it better than straight people. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I just feel like I don't, there's not, I, I mean, I have tons of evidence that I could, I could just, you know, probably put, like, not in a mean way, just like, Goodness. we're two moms, it's amazing, you know? <laughs> Although sometimes I wish we had somebody who was very strong, who could do all the things that sometimes, like Stacy's stronger than me, but she makes me do all the things. And so sometimes I really, really am out of my depth when it comes to holding Sid, lifting bags, 
trying to like, and then I just imagine like, I see like the other day I was carrying Sid in the stroller and this man saw me on the street trying to get into the car and he said, ma'am, can I help you? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, join our relationship. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, how flexible are you? Um, no, I was like, I'm totally fine. But inside I thought, well, that's what my husband would do. He would just, you know, so I guess I'm straight now, but um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, I thought this one, this one was for me, I love your collaboration with Laura Jane Grace. How did it come about? Do you have an interesting story you, you could share about that experience? Well, I was a like, gigantic obsessive against me fan. Um, when they put out their first album, their manager gave it to us. And so I, I just became like very obsessed. And then an opportunity to interview um, a band that I was friends with at Warp Tour came up and while I was interviewing this other band, Against Me were also there, and I made a joke that I really wanted to interview Against Me, so I ended up getting to meet them and interview them. And on the video, like in the interview, it was very me, so I just was like, oh my god, you know, just acted totally ridiculous and said that I wanted to join the band. And if they were ever looking to bring in a new member, they should ask me, and then like, maybe a month later, my manager got in touch and said that they were making a new album, and would it be interested in featuring on one of the songs? And they sent me a demo of uh, Born on the FM Waves and I flew to LA and went to the studio and they were making it with, um, why am I, Butch Vig? Butch Vig, which was like, I wasn't there. No, Sarah wasn't there. I know, <laughs> I was just drinking last night. Um, anyway, uh, anyway, so Butch Vig was there. It was very intimidating, but they were very nice and we recorded the song and then I went back a few months later to record the video and the only funny story I have from that is that I got there at about 11 in the morning and we all got set up and in the video it's just a live performance video and I was so nervous because they're all so active and we're just like thrashing around on instruments and I'm not like that and they rolled out this cart before we started recording and all had a drink and I, I never drink when I'm working and they were like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, 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 give me a drink. And so we're kind of like half cut in the video. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> anyway, I love them. Wait, who's, who's Elizabeth Buckley Goddard? This is your 67th show. It is. That is amazing. <laughs> oh God. I mean, I, wanna, I always wanna ask people, but why? Because I feel like, <laughs> Like I can barely stand us, so I'm like, why would you ever want to do this so much? But thank you, sincerely. Really thank appreciate you. it. Where um, is, do you have a favorite show? No, no. I don't. I don't. What about a worst one where you were like, maybe that'll be the last one I do? <laughs> no, I keep hoping. They're never, it's never the worst show, is it? The best show or the worst show. When did you first see a show? Uh, 2nd of March, 2005, when I was 15. Wow. So it's over 18 years now. So cool. It's nice to see you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming to so many shows. We do joke that we have a hard time fathoming it, but uh, it's actually a real point of pride for us that so many people come to so many shows. It really means a lot to us, you know? That we, we have so, there, there's lots of questions we didn't answer, but we're going to play some music. But I wanted to ask you, what's your name? You didn't get to meet Rosie. Oh, Rosie. They came to the Soul Bang show when it got canceled, and we became very close friends. Oh. <laughs> I did wave. Yeah, you didn't get out of the car, and then I saw Rosie, and well, was no, like, I Sarah didn't get out of the car, and I'm like, well, now who's your favorite? <laughs> Do you have a question that you want to ask? Was it really your question? That sounds like a that sounds like a parent question, but. <laughs> Very inquisitive. Yeah. I feel lucky that I get this, even though we didn't, we didn't get to connect in solving. Thank you for this. Oh, it says yellow. That's adorable. Has this, are you have you been having a good time in Nashville? What did you guys do yesterday? Uh, stuff. Yeah. What's your highlight? Anything really cool? Uh, I don't know. Too many things. Too many things. Did you eat? Did you eat? Oh, you swam. Amazing. Did you eat, eat anything delicious? No. Donuts? Barbecue? No. no. <laughs> Gluten free. Gluten free? I like you a lot, Rosie. Um, all right, well, we're going to play a couple songs off the con. 
thank you guys so much for being here. Such a delight. We're in a con phase right now, so. It's also the only songs we know. <laughs> First time I'd been in a house since I was a kid, like since a teenager, and uh, um, and my roommate uh, who moved in with me because my girlfriend and I had broken up, and I had this two extra bedrooms. My roommate, when she moved in, we called the house the Art Farm, and she liked to smoke weed, and I would let myself at the time have one cigarette. Don't ever smoke, Rosie. Um, <laughs> and. But I would only let myself have it at dark. And so this song's called Dark Come Soon. And it's about a lot of things, but really it's about how I couldn't wait for it to be dark so that I could smoke. <laughs> and it's just kind of like, was metaphorical for like, I would try to be good all day, you know, try to write songs and be productive, but then nighttime would come and I'd kind of fall apart. And that's when I'd start like obsessively like sending text messages to the girl I liked and then if she didn't respond right away, I would delete all of the text messages and block her phone number and then like five minutes later I would unblock her phone number and be like, relax, relax, relax. So. Dark, oh no you can't come soon enough for me, say, I'm not a Get a million miles from me, say 
so much it's uh you know not to be a downer but it's like you know we're 25 i really appreciated your clapping that's something that would happen to me too you're a wonderful person don't be ashamed it's like your kindness is on display for everyone now we all know how kind you are um yeah we've been just doing this a long time and we were had a meeting with our management team yesterday and it's we're talking a lot about how to keep vip going and how to make it fun and original but it's just, it's kind of like my favorite time of the day. So it just means a lot. So thank you so much. And we'll see you all in a few hours. Thank, thank you guys. guys. Yeah. Thanks.